Yeah, I think those are the metaphors that we, we could say, like we have a spark of truth or a spark of God in every person and the Holy Spirit resides in us, but it's not talking about in personalities. Can it's not the talking... Question? Pardon? Can you repeat the question? Okay, she was asking about the, talking about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit not seeing the world the way you see it or the Holy Spirit uh, seeing the world as neutral and so forth. And so she was saying, how do we reconcile that with the, the Holy Spirit resides in each of us? And so I was just sharing initially that, that when we say resides in us, it's not that resides in personalities or in separate selves or resides behind the mask, that like there's a spark of light behind the mask. Each separate mask has a spark of light underneath it. It's really the Holy Spirit is is in our mind and I think one of the best kind of examples of that is lessons 29 and 30 from the Course. You know, God is in everything I see is lesson 29 and then lesson 30 is God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. Technically speaking, since God doesn't know about the world, to say that God is in everything I see, people will say, well wait a minute, he's contradicting himself left and right here. You know, God knows not form, and now he's telling me God's in everything I see, and God's in that pencil, and in that waste paper basket, and everything. What's he doing? He's, he's going schizo here on me. No, you just have to really understand that what he really means is, the Holy Spirit is in everything I see, because the Holy Spirit is in my mind. And the Holy Spirit is in everything I see, because there is a way of seeing the world that, that includes the Holy Spirit, that, and also includes my mind that I can tap into that and see the world with the Holy Spirit. So, you might say that we talk about non-judgment is the answer. Well, the Holy Spirit is that non-judgment. And when we open to see with the Holy Spirit, we are in a state of non-judgment and we see the world from that state of non-judgment. But to think that that actually Spirit kind of comes down into form and indwells in people or in animals or trees or uh, in the ocean or whatever, that's, that again would be an attempt to bring the truth into illusions. It's, it's much more the reverse of there's a presence in our mind that is the remembrance of God. It is this remembrance of this stillness and non-judgment. And when we open ourselves to align with that, then we, we perceive the world with the Holy Spirit. So it's, it's that way, instead of uh, more of a, of a sense of bringing the Spirit into the human being, or residing inside of us, or in our hearts, or, or anything in a physical sense. Um, I've come to, to realize, too, that, that there's no real way to spiritualize matter, and that would just be a, an error of trying to spiritualize matter, trying to see the, the Spirit you know, in matter in some way. It also is a sense of letting go of all concepts around the Spirit. And uh, the Holy Spirit, in one sense, is like a bridge uh, that's capable of overlooking the error of the ego and looking right to the light of the Atonement. And that's why we need to see with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is so whole that the Holy Spirit looks right into the atonement and basically overlooks error. So the Holy Spirit doesn't perceive errors. You know, that's kind of like, whoa, that's amazing that there's a part of my mind that, that doesn't even know what an error is, that, that literally overlooks the error. And what I find with Course in Miracles students is they may emphasize some teachers emphasizing exposing the false and raising up the unconscious. And it's good that they do that because you can't skip over that. That's an essential part of the awakening process. But they miss the second part, which is do not see error. You know, he, in one of his pamphlets, he actually puts that in italics, do not see error. And the only way you can live without seeing error is with the Holy Spirit. There's no human being that can walk this world and say, okay, I'm not going to, unless you use the ostrich approach <laughs> and you try to just bury your head in the sand and pretend that it's not there. But 
But to not see error is really the essence of what true forgiveness is. And Jennifer's been sharing that a lot, that it's actually, it's actually a state of non-judgment. It's not like, it's like an active process of going out and trying to forgive this and this and that. That can be a long process that goes on and on and on and on. But actually just opening to that state of pure non-judgment is what it means to align with the Holy Spirit.